Hey everybody, it is Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. Welcome to the NFL Fantasy Football Show presented by Subway. Try the Subway Series menu, your pick of 12 irresistible subs. It's me, your man, MG Marcus Grant, joined by Michael F. Florio and the specialist cast of dozens that I was put on this show each and every day, each and every week. We're in week 13, and I was, I was saying to somebody <laughs> just this morning that week 12 felt like it lasted for three whole weeks. <laughs> like, everything was kind of cruising along, and then week 12 was just like a, a natural brake pad to the season. So now hopefully we can get things rolling it, again. It, we're at that point in the season where, like, it feels like the season's been going on for a while, but at the <laughs> same point in time, I'm like, I can't believe it's week 13 already. Right. I'm sort of like, I can't believe it's week 13 already, but then I'm also like, we still have, like, six more weeks of this yeah. season, too. <laughs> like, I, I keep being like, oh, it's almost over, and then I'm like, oh, it's still over really. a month left. No, not really. We're going to be doing shows into, like, the first week of January, so we're still not close to the end yet, but we're glad that you are with us here. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, we will have our game previews for week 13. We're also going to go do some heroes and villains get you some sleepers also talk about some scary matchups things that uh, you know you may be starting these guys but you don't have to like why you're starting them at any point but let's get started as we always do with the fantasy headlines Tom Pelissero is reporting that Josh Jacobs is not expected to practice much this week. He is dealing with a calf strain. This coming off the 300 total yard game he had against the Seahawks last week. Raiders have a juicy matchup against the Chargers on Sunday. But if Jacobs misses time, how do you feel about Zamir White? Or is there maybe somebody else in that Raiders backfield you're interested in? I think Zamir White would be the lead runner if uh, if Josh Jacobs misses time. I, I think he would very much so be in play as a streaming option against the Chargers. I think Amir Abdullah there can be come in, uh, come in and be like a sleeper in deeper leagues. But I would say, like obviously, temper expectations. Zamir White isn't going to go out and do what Josh Jacobs can do. He can have a nice game. Don't get me wrong, but uh, not many running backs possess the capability of dropping thirty plus fantasy points in any given week. Also, I think the thing about what happens if Jacobs doesn't play is. It's going to be piecemeal how they put these opportunities together. Part of why Josh Jacobs has been so good is that the Raiders are just loading him up with touches. He has been the guy. But if he doesn't play, I think you see Zamir White get a number of the carries. You see Amir Abdullah probably come in and catch the football. We may even see Brandon Bolden a little bit. It's just going to be so piecemeal. I think White's the guy who takes the lead, but I don't think any of these guys are going to give you a number of touches. So unless somebody hits a big play... It's going to be kind of a mediocre number, I think, fantasy-wise. In Cincinnati, Jamar Chase says he expects to return and get reps this week against the Kansas City Chiefs. Chase has missed the last four games with a hip injury. Now, clearly, you are starting Jamar Chase if he is on the field. But how do you feel now about, say, T. Higgins and or Tyler Boyd once Chase is back? I still think T. Higgins is a must play. He's playing great football right now. This is a matchup that I anticipate will be a high scoring back and forth kind of game. And the Chiefs have really struggled this year on the long ball. So we know that Chase could beat him there. We know that T. Higgins could beat him there. Tyler Boyd is the one that I think takes the biggest hit here. We saw when Chase and Higgins were both healthy earlier this year. It was up and down for Tyler Boyd. He'd have some nice games, but then there'd be some games where like he would just disappear and the floor was very low. So uh, I, I think Boyd is the big loser in this one, but I think in a matchup like this, he's still in play in deeper leagues. I was going to say, I think he's still in play just because this has the potential to be a high-scoring game. We know the Chiefs can score points. We know the Bengals can score points when everything is right there. So that gives you a little bit of hope about Tyler Boyd. But it is hard to imagine that the Bengals can support all three guys at one time, especially when you have a running game. You've got potentially Joe Mixon back, and you've got to figure out how to feed him as well. So Boyd is the guy who I think takes the biggest hit there. But you're not dropping him. You're holding on to him. And in the right matchup, you're probably starting him as well. Deshaun Watson is back. We know he's been practicing with the Cleveland Browns, and he is expected to start on Sunday against his former team, the Houston Texans. Now, we've talked a lot about Watson and getting ready for his return. I know there are plenty of people who would rather not deal with Deshaun Watson on their fantasy rosters, and that is certainly understandable. But anybody who has picked him up, who is looking at him maybe on their bench at the moment, would you feel comfortable starting a guy who, by the time he takes the field, it will be nearly two calendar years since the last time he played an NFL game? Yeah, uh, spoiler alert if you haven't read the Stardom Sit'em column yet, but he he is in there as a sit for me this week. And uh, 
I, I figure it, it's going to be 700 days on Sunday from the last time that he was on yeah. an NFL field in, a, in an actual game that counted. Uh, but not only that, like, the Texans have been good against quarterbacks. They allowed the third fewest fantasy points to them, and it's largely because you could just run all over them. They have two good running backs in Cleveland, especially with Nick Chubb there. So I think this will be a game where they rely on the running game and don't ask Deshaun Watson to do too much. I, I spelt it out, though, in the article. Like, all the quarterbacks I would play over him, the quarterbacks I would play over him over. I have gotten a lot of questions about Deshaun Watson so far this week, and, and my thing has been... I would rather just take a wait and see. Now, obviously, like you mentioned, it depends sort of who your other quarterback options are, but you're talking about a guy who has not played in an NFL game since January, I believe January 3rd of 2021. So it has been nearly two full years since he has played a game. And, and maybe the adrenaline sort of carries him through playing his former team. I'm not sure, but I don't know if I want to take that chance right now. I would rather wait and see uh, before I start. Deshaun I know a Watson. lot of the time we're like, maybe the adrenaline. And, and a lot of people are like, first game back, he's going to be so hyped against his old team. I'm like, will that work against him, though? Like, could <laughs> right. he be too worked up and then, like, force stuff and make mistakes? I mean, that's always possible. I would just rather. Uh, uh, I agree. I would rather just kind of stay away from him this week. And let's just see sort of what happens at that point. That gets us to our heroes and villains of the week. Who is the guy who deserves some more buzz who could be carrying your team to victory this week? I think it's Garrett Wilson. Like, Garrett Wilson is the real deal. We know that he is a capable wide receiver. And shout out to a friend of the show, Matt Harmon, on, on Reception Perception. He's been hyping up Garrett Wilson all year, saying that he is like a legit alpha when it comes to route running and being able to get open. He's played four games without Zach Wilson this year. He's finished as a top five fantasy wide receiver in two of them. Uh, he's averaging over 19 fantasy points per game when Zach Wilson sits. He's getting a, a healthy amount of targets. Last week, he had eight targets. No one else on the team had more than three. So, uh, And in a matchup like this where I think they'll have to put up points to keep up with the Vikings and the Vikings have really struggled in the secondary this year. I think Garrett Wilson goes off again. A, a little nugget I got from the very smart Dwayne McFarlane, who you should go out and follow on Twitter if you don't. He was looking at the yards per route run for Garrett Wilson and comparing them to other rookies. And the guys he compares to are guys like Odell Beckham Jr., wow. Mike Evans, Justin Jefferson. I mean, it is a it is an elite group of rookies in recent vintage that Garrett Wilson compares to when you look at the yards per route run. I believe in David Montgomery this week, and I don't really care whether or not Justin Fields is there. I know we're still sort of waiting for updates on Fields, but for me, it's just the matchup against the Green Bay Packers, and we saw that last week with the Eagles running all over Green Bay, both Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts getting it done on the ground there, and I think even more so, actually, if Fields is not available. That means that you're really going to have the Bears lean on that running game, lean on Montgomery, and give him plenty of opportunities. So I don't know if he's going to give you a Miles Sanders 31-point game, but he is going to get heavily used in this offense this week against a run defense that has struggled all season long. So Montgomery, I know he's not exciting. I keep saying this. He is sort of mad. Nobody gets fired up about, man, I got David Montgomery in my lineup. But he just keeps getting opportunities, and he keeps doing the most with them. So, uh, you know, look, I, I would prefer Justin Fields is there. I think that makes things better. But I'm okay with Montgomery this week. Those are the heroes. Who is your fantasy villain for Week 13? Isaiah... Pacheco mm. and I, I caused a little bit of a stir on fantasy Twitter earlier this week when I tweeted out that uh, Melvin Gordon is better than Isaiah Pacheco and people are like oh compare the numbers and I'm like yeah uh, one of them is running with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs <laughs> offense and the other has Russell Wilson and that awful Broncos but that's besides the point uh, Isaiah Pacheco he, it's such a low floor, low ceiling type of play because he only has four catches all year long. So if he doesn't get a touchdown, even if he rushes for 100 yards, that's 10 fantasy points. And like, if that's towards his ceiling, that's very worrisome. It's a tough matchup as well against uh, the Bengals. And he just, he's kind of a plotter. Like he doesn't have breakaway speed. He's not going to ever, you know, have a long 40, 50 yard run, something like that. So for me, I'm staying away and I'm not nearly as excited as everyone else is on him. It's funny. He's a lot of action, but not a lot of motion, if that makes sense, right? <laughs> he's like, you know, it's like he's churning his legs, he's pumping his legs, and it looks like he's going fast, but he doesn't look like he's actually going fast when you see him compared to other players. So maybe to, we've been fooled. To quote Patrick Claybon, uh, the defenders just jog and they, they just catch sort of up jog with him. and they keep up with him, exactly. Saquon Barkley is my potential villain of the week, and you're starting Saquon. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're going to sit Saquon Barkley. 
But the Commanders have been really good against running backs and against running games in general this season. And that sort of worries me for Saquon. I think he's going to get plenty of touches and plenty of opportunities. Maybe we see Daniel Jones try to throw the ball a little bit more, but this is still an offense that runs through Saquon. But the way the Commanders have shut down opposing running games makes me very, very concerned. So, like I said, you're starting Saquon, but I don't potentially like the matchup and what the outcome could be for him this week. We will dive into our game preview, starting with the Thursday night football game. It is the Bills and the Patriots. This one from Foxborough. You can see that, of course. 8.15 Eastern time on Prime Video and streaming on NFL+. Plus. Let's talk about the running backs in this one, though, right? Ramondre Stevenson, Devin Singletary. They've, you know, Stevenson's been pretty good. Singletary's had some weeks. Who do you think scores more points this week between the two of them? Ramondre Stevenson. And I... I like I have Stevenson as a sit in my start sit him column, and I have single uh, as a start, and Singletary is a sit this week because the the Patriots are really tough on running backs. Whereas the Bills, you've been able to run all over them as of late. Von Miller's out this week. Uh, they're they're just very banged up on defense as well. Plus, Stevenson could get he's shown us he can get twenty fantasy points without scoring a touchdown just on his pass game usage alone. I'm not sure Devin Singletary can get 20 fantasy points with a touchdown. That's sort of the hard part. I'm going to go with Stevenson as well. He just has been a workhorse at times for the Patriots. And even with Damian Harris back last week, you know, we saw a lot of Stevenson. You made the point that he scored 20 points without doing a whole lot on the ground. So I think he's got a good opportunity this week against a Bills defense that has not been as formidable as it has been in the past. Next one. Will Gabe Davis bounce back this week? He had 7.8 fantasy points last week. It was Isaiah McKenzie who did a lot of the work in the passing game on Thanksgiving Day. Will Gabe Davis have a big Gabe Davis game or will it be kind of the meh game? I think it'll be a meh, meh Davis this week. Uh, <laughs> look, he always has the capability of putting up a huge day. We know that in fantasy football, but this is a game that's going to be in New England. It's very cold right now, the forecast is saying. Not saying too much bad weather, but that could change quickly in New England this time of year. We know that. Uh, the Patriots have, have been good against receivers this year and Gabe Davis hasn't been the same since we saw Josh Allen kind of injure his elbow I know last week late in the game he was throwing much more effectively but if he's struggling to throw the deep ball at all that really hurts Gabe Davis it really does and the Patriots have been pretty good against deep throws which is where Davis makes a lot of his hay yes he can work underneath but the big games have come because they've connected with him downfield New England just doesn't give up those kind of shots. So I'm not expecting anything big for Davis this week. I think if you see Allen working underneath, I think that means more Isaiah McKenzie, maybe some dump off to Devin Singletary. But I, I would not be surprised if you're looking at another six, seven points from Gabe Davis this week against New England. We are just getting started with our look around the slate of week 13 games. We will dive into more of those previews coming up after the break here on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. It's time for Look to the Data, presented by Intel. We got this nugget from our NFL research team about Kenneth Walker III. He has nine scrimmage touchdowns since week five, tied for the most in the league with Travis Kelsey and Austin Eckler. He has been an absolute beast since taking over for the injured Rashad Penny. Will he score 20 points against the Rams on Sunday? The Rams giving up 19 fantasy points per game since week five, or actually I should say Walker scoring 19 fantasy points per game since week five. More than guys like Nick Chubb, Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, Leonard Fournette, Saquon Barkley, Aaron Jones, and Jonathan Taylor. So does he get a dub against the Rams this week? I think so. Uh, he It was nice to see him approach that number last week with uh, with just averaging like two yards per carry because he found the end zone twice. Uh, I think he's a safe bet to score a touchdown again this week. I know the Rams on the year have been tough against running backs, but they're not going to have Aaron Donald now. Like they're, they're just as depleted as depleted can get all around. And this is low-key a big game for Seattle, who's now on the outside looking in for the playoffs. So I, I do expect them to ride Kenneth Walker if possible. Yeah, that loss last week to the Raiders hurt them in a lot of ways because it put them behind the 49ers. And as you mentioned, on the outside looking in for the playoffs, I do think Kenneth Walker has a big game this week against the Rams. The Rams right now are sort of – they're running on fumes, and, and <laughs> you know they're, they're just trying to make it to the finish line. You got guys getting injured and, and sort of dropping out. They don't have a whole lot left. I think this is a chance for the Seahawks to come and take advantage of that, and Kenneth Walker should be a big part of, uh, of all that happening. 
Back to our game previews, the Steelers and the Falcons. And this is a report from our own Ian Rappaport saying Najee Harris uh, dealing with an abdominal injury didn't suffer a major issue on Monday night, but his playing status still up in the air for Sunday against Atlanta, which is a great matchup on paper, at least for Najee Harris. But anything in particular that you are pointing to in this game? The running back on the other side, Cordero Patterson, I, I would look to get him out of my starting lineup this week if possible. And it's not so much about the matchup. The Steelers are middle of the pack against running backs, but Patterson has been splitting the snaps and carries. And even in before last game, the targets with Tyler Algier. And then since he's returned from the knee injury, his high on the ground is 52 yards and he has not reached 20 yards in the passing game. So we're talking about a very low floor. Like if he doesn't score a touchdown, it's single digits. It could be even below five fantasy points, potentially at, at the very best without a touchdown. We're talking about like 10 fantasy points. So I, I would stay away from him if possible. It's so weird what the Falcons are doing offensively. I, I can't really make heads or tails of it. Although Patterson's a guy who gets touches. So maybe that helps. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused by the whole thing. Broncos at the Ravens. J.K. Dobbins, who has been on injured reserve with a knee issue, is clear to return to practice this week. No word of whether or not he's going to play yet. I wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens play it cautiously with him. But I would also tell you that you can probably sit Gus Edwards, or at the very least, beware of Gus Edwards this week against the Broncos. The the Ravens have really been struggling offensively lately. I know they ended up kind of you know, putting up a, a halfway decent number. At least Lamar did put up uh, 23 points last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars, but it took them a while to get there. It was kind of a slog for them. And now they've got this Broncos defense that has been lights out all season long. Say what you want about the Broncos offense. Broncos defense has been great this season. So that makes me very nervous about an offense that's really struggling to move the ball consistently. So if you can get away from Gus Edwards, I would highly recommend it this week. Packers at the Bears. I already praised uh, David Montgomery for what he potentially could do this week against Green Bay. Anybody else who maybe deserves some love in this game? Yeah, I'm with you on Montgomery, but I think both running backs on both sides are in play uh, this week. And then Christian Watson. I'm starting him everywhere, and, and I have him on a couple of my teams, I, and I'm so happy that I was able to pick this guy up because in one league, I got him the week I lost Cooper Cup, and my lineup hasn't taken a hit at all because Christian Watson has been putting up Cooper Cup-like numbers the last few weeks. Not saying he is Cooper Cup, but he has scored at least 21 fantasy points in each of the last three weeks, averaging 25 per game. Uh, and if you're worried about Aaron Rodgers, his long catch and run last week came with Jordan Love. He has shown us that he can win downfield as a long deep receiver. He could win after the catch like he did this past game. And when they get in the red zone, he is their guy. Even on the play where Randall Cobb caught the touchdown, that was a design play for Christian Watson where he was the first read and Rodgers just had to look elsewhere after that. So uh, against the Bears defense that has really been struggling, especially in uh, against receivers, I think he's a must-start option this week. Remember Romeo Dobbs? Oh, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> like I feel like we haven't said that name in weeks. Oh, man. Jaguars at the Lions. Last week, Travis Etienne left the game with a foot injury. Afterwards, Doug Peterson said that everything was okay. He probably could have come back in. We were playing it safe, and we just held him out. So that gives us confidence to believe he's coming back to play this week against Detroit. How confident would you be in starting him? If he plays against the Lions, I have to play him in fantasy. I understand the risk, but the ceiling is just far too high. Like, he can easily go off for 30 points in this matchup, I would say. Absolutely. And this is, I think, one of the higher scoring games I uh, predicted. It's, it's, I think it's predicted to be one of the higher oh, scoring okay. games of the week. But no, I, 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 but I, I agree with that assessment. I think it's going to be high scoring because both these defenses give up a lot of points. Both these offenses are starting to play well. So I do think that means good things potentially for Travis Etienne if he does play. I will also say that you can start or stream at least Trevor Lawrence in this ball game. Just because look over the last few weeks, Lawrence starting to get hot. He's been scoring or averaging more than 20 fantasy points over the last several weeks. It just looks like he's more comfortable, even if the numbers don't necessarily bear that out. Just watching Trevor Lawrence looks like he's starting to get the hang of things. Maybe the game's starting to slow down for him a little bit, spreading the ball around to all of his pass catchers, getting a lot more people involved. And because the Lions are, well, the Lions defensively, this feels like a good opportunity to get him in into QB leagues, super flex, maybe even, you know, deeper leagues, maybe uh, in one QB leagues if you're in a deep league situation. Browns at the Texans. Uh, we know that Deshaun Watson is coming back to start against his former team. Anything else, though, notable for this contest? 
I, I say beware of Amari Cooper, and I, I understand you probably can't sit him with as well as he's been playing, but you're going to have to temper expectations. Uh, this is a road game. We know that he has really struggled on the road. In neutral games, he's fine. Uh, but the Texans, again, their secondary has played well this year. Uh, their, their top corner has been really effective, so they could put him on Amari Cooper there. I, I still think Cooper can win, but it's Deshaun Watson's first game in 700 days, like we said. And it's a matchup where the Browns could easily just get a lead and just ride Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt all game long and just ease Deshaun Watson into it. That is my concern for Amari Cooper. Honestly, with as bad as the Texans' run defense has been and as bad as the Browns' run defense has been, we might have a combined, like, 67 carries between these two teams. This game will be over and every other game is in, like, the third quarter. Oh, yeah. No, this game will be – like, they'll play this game like they're double parked. I mean, they'll just run the ball <laughs> and run the ball and run the clock and just, let's just get the hell out of here, everybody. Jets and the Vikings. And you know what? I'm in on Mike White, at least as a deep sleeper this week. I think Mike – yep, let's do the air horns for Mike White. Let's get it going. He injected some life into the Jets last week. He looked good throwing the football. And I feel like at this point, we have enough of a sample size to sort of see who Mike White is. He's made four career starts. He's got over 300 passing yards in two of those starts. He's got multiple touchdown passes in two of those starts. And you look back on the two sort of bad games he had. One last year came against the Bills when the Bills defense was legitimately stout and was legitimately a problem for everybody. The other one came in a game where he left early because of an injury. So in games where you know he starts and finishes and isn't facing you know arguably the best defense in the league at the time, Mike White's been okay. And the Vikings are giving up a lot of yards through the air to quarterbacks. Uh, I, I think they've been victimized by the light. Look, I think they gave up big yards to Zach, not Zach Wilson because they haven't played the Jets, but the, the Teddy Bridgewater. There's some, some sort of meh quarterbacks that the Vikings have been victimized by this year. So that's, that's my way of saying Mike White, deep sleeper this week. I like I, him. I'm right there with you. So there we go. I, in fact, I know I think we've already gotten some, some tweets about people saying they're dropping like Kobe Brissett to pick up Mike White. I endorse that. I think that's a really good idea. More game previews on the way, including a little bit of a reunion between the Dolphins and the 49ers. It'll be like old home week in Santa Clara again. We'll talk about that and more next on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Your game on the go wherever you are. This is how you football. With NFL Plus, watch live, local, and primetime games on mobile and listen to live game audio now through Super Bowl 57. Sign up for the rest of the season with a special offer of $19.99. Commanders at the Giants. I said earlier in the show that I was a little bit worried about Saquon Barkley, but is there somebody there you think has maybe a better outlook this week? Yeah, I think Darius Slayton is in play this week, and a lot of it has to do with what you were saying about Saquon Barkley. Like, the commanders are elite at stopping the run, and if they're able to limit Saquon Barkley, I don't think you could ever fully stop him, but if you could just contain him, the Giants will have to throw the ball more to put up points, and the commanders have allowed a ton of production in the passing game. As good as they are on the ground, they're weak in the air, especially against wide receivers. Darius Slayton's been playing good football, averaging four, just under 14 fantasy points per game in his last five weeks. He is second in the NFL in yards per catch, so we know... He could win downfield. We saw that on Thanksgiving. And if that catch of his went one foot further <laughs> and it was a touchdown, we are feeling very differently about Darius Slayton right now. I, I would continue to ride with him, especially in this matchup. He hasn't been flashy, but he's been consistent, and that counts for something. Titans at the Eagles. And after Miles Sanders come out, came off his huge game last week against the Green Bay Packers, I think – you need to be kind of be wary of him. Beware, beware, be wary. All, all those things above about Miles <laughs> Sanders this week because the Titans, their run defense, it's not the Packers' run defense. They've been very good against running backs. It's the secondary where Tennessee has had its issues this year. So this feels like a Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith sort of game for Philadelphia, maybe not so much on the Miles Sanders situation. And look, if you have Sanders, you know that you can probably get away from him just because – he fell so much in drafts and people were sort of avoiding him. So you have other options, most likely. So if you have other options, I'd probably think about starting them this week over Sanders. Seahawks at the Rams. And we were hyped about Kenneth Walker the third earlier in the show. Not so hyped about the Rams. And it feels like your start sits sort of reflect that right now. 
Yep. I, I think this game is as straightforward as it gets right now. Start your Seahawks, sit your Rams. Like, Geno Smith, you're going to see B-roll of him right now. He's been playing good football this year. I, I, I think he remains in play as a low-end QB1. Uh, we know to start Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf each week. Kenneth Walker, we've already talked about. And then on the Rams side... Yeah, their, their offense right now is broken. Last week, none of their receivers top 30 yards. Uh, none of their running backs top 40 yards. Bryce Perkins led the way with 44 rushing yards. He, he was actually the only quarterback last week that Russell Wilson outscored in fantasy points. Uh, I, I just think this is a week that you want to completely get away from every one of your Rams. And because of the matchup, you want to start all your Seahawks. Allen Robinson went on injured reserve officially, so he's, his season is done. Uh, Tyler Higby is still there, but the target share is probably evaporating now that Bryce Perkins is a quarterback. I just don't see any point to have any Rams on your roster at this point. Yeah. Uh, maybe Cooper. I guess Cooper Cup isn't officially done for the year, but I don't really see a scenario yeah, where they bring him back. I, I don't think we see Cooper Cup again this year. I don't know if we ever see Aaron Donald again. I don't know if we see Sean McVay after this year. Like, I think things are going to be very different for the Rams moving forward. The last Ram to leave SoFi, please turn off the lights. <laughs> It'll be Cam Akers. It probably will be Cam Akers, right? <laughs> of, of all the people left, it'll be Cam Akers. <laughs> Dolphins at the 49ers, which is kind of a reunion, right? It's Mike McDaniel coming back to coach against his old team. Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert playing their old team. In fact, I don't know if you saw, there was a little bit of... of social media heat between Raheem Mostert and Debo Samuel where oh really uh, I mean it's like good natured but Raheem Mostert basically saying you know he thinks there's more talent in Miami than there was in San Francisco and Debo responding with you gotta be real with yourself man <laughs> like, <laughs> be real with yourself Raheem so you know there's a little bit of, of good natured rivalry between these two teams that have players that know each other very well Debo himself, though, kind of in a bit of a fantasy slump lately. It's been Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey getting a whole lot of work. Debo had just seven points last week against New Orleans. Did have 22 points in Week 11 against Arizona, but seven against the Chargers in Week 10. Does he get to 15 this week against Miami? I think so, uh, because of the reasons why he did so well against the Arizona Cardinals. It's why I have Jimmy G as a start this week. The, the Dolphins are in the top four in yak allowed to opposing offenses this year. And if there's ever an offense that was built on yak, it's this one. And if there's ever a player built to pick up a lot of yak, it's Debo Samuel. I also think that Debo gets the 15 because he might get a few more carries now that Elijah Mitchell yes. is out and he's going to be gone for the next six to eight weeks is the expectation. Sure, we'll see Tyrion Davis Price probably work in there, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see Debo Samuel get a few more rushing attempts. And the Dolphins have struggled against running games, so maybe that helps Debo get to 15 as well. I will also say, beware of Jeff Wilson. Because, look, Jeff Wilson's been very good. He stepped in and immediately became the RB1 in Miami once he got there. But this is a Niner defense that has really clamped down on running games. I don't know that this is going to be a super high-scoring affair between these two teams. And, you know, Wilson does have the ability to hit a home run pretty much at any time. But I do think that the 49ers will sort of have a blueprint for how to slow him down. They should have an idea on how to attack a Mike McDaniel running game. So I worry about Wilson. He may be starting him. I get it. But I'm not really excited about the matchup this week. Chiefs at the Bengals. Now we do expect that Jamar Chase is going to play. We know that Juju Smith-Schuster is going to play. At least we hope so. We didn't see a whole lot of him last week. Do you trust starting him this week against the Bengals after just a 6.8 performance last week against the Rams? Last week was disappointing, but yes, I'm going to be starting Juju Smith-Schuster. I have him on a couple of rosters, and he's in my starting lineup. I, I, I was worried about what he did last week, but part of me thinks like they were playing the Rams the, the Chiefs know that this is a huge game this week against the Bengal team that they really struggled with twice last season. Part of me thinks they were just easing Juju back to really let him go this week. But I think either way, in a game that could be very high scoring, the upside is too high. And that's sort of the reason I would go with Juju as well. I think they were just sort of working him back in after missing time with an injury. They didn't necessarily need him to produce a whole lot. But this week, they are very much going to need him to be involved. So I think he is worth starting in, in a lot of spots. Anybody else that we should be considering starting in this game? I think uh, we, we already went over the, the receivers and stuff. I, I say you start the Bengals running back, and right now it's looking like it will be Joe Mixon, which is great because I have Mixon on a couple of teams, and I really missed him last week. We know that the upside is very high when he's out there, and the floor is just very safe. But 
If Mixon sits, I mean, Samaj P. Ryan's been great filling in for him. He's going to get the bulk of the volume. The Chiefs have struggled against running backs this year, particularly through the air. So I think we could see a lot of uh, pass game involvement for whoever the starting running back is. But obviously, if Mixon plays, we're playing him. But even if it's P. Ryan, I say go ahead and get him in your lineup. Certainly a huge game after these two teams met in the playoffs last year and played an epic one with the Bengals basically dominating the second half on their way to a win. Chargers at the Raiders. This might seem a little bit weird, but I, I think you got to be aware of Josh Palmer this week. And, and, you know, we'll see what happens with all the rest of the pieces of that passing game, the rest of the, the wide receiver core there for the Chargers. But the Raiders have been relatively good against wide receivers this year. And with Palmer being kind of a boomer bust guy, being that downfield guy, that makes it a little bit more difficult to get him the football. We know Keenan Allen's going to get his targets. If Mike Williams is there, he's going to get those opportunities. I just think that this is a situation where you might see Palmer maybe not get as many looks or as many quality looks as we've seen in the past. Plus, every now and then, you get a wild DeAndre Carter that pops up out of nowhere. So, I think there's some big games coming for the Chargers. I think Austin Eckler is going to be fine. Maybe even Gerald Everett. Josh Palmer worries me a little bit this week. So, that's just for some folks maybe in deeper leagues or who are hurting at wide receiver. Still got a couple more games to talk about. Plus, we're going to dive into some scary matchups. Some guys that you may be starting, but you don't have to like their situations. We have that next on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Sunday Night Football, it's the Colts and the Cowboys. The Colts hoping that those timeouts rolled over into next week. <laughs> Spoiler alert, they don't. Uh, Zeke and Tony Pollard have been a storyline all year long in that Dallas backfield. Who do you think scores more points this week? I want to go with Tony Pollard. It, it started to happen last week on Thanksgiving when Pollard had more carries and more targets than Zeke. The only issue is... Zeke did more with the work, so we have to worry about him getting a larger share of it this week. But either way, Pollard is the more explosive option. He comes with the higher ceiling here. Zeke kind of needs a touchdown to get like 15 fantasy points. Pollard can go out and drop like 30 in any given game. So for me, I, I think it's just Pollard over Zeke rest of the season. I think it's Tony Pollard over Zeke as well, this one. And it was sort of nice to see Zeke go out and have a nice game last week. I Look, I still have a soft spot in my fantasy heart for Ezekiel Elliott. He's been so good for so long, and, and maybe I was a little bit resistant. But I understand. Look, I, I see Tony Pollard. I think he's a good player. I think he's deserving of more opportunities, and I think he is going to be the more productive player on Sunday Night Football. Anything else that we should be thinking about for this game? I, I think the Cowboys' defense are a must-start option. Uh, not only do they get the Colts, who allow the most fantasy points per game to opposing defenses, the Colts give up a bunch of sacks, and the Cowboys lead the league in sacks. And that's what derailed the Colts' offense last week was uh, T.J. Watt and co. being able to get so much consistent pressure on Matt Ryan. Micah Parsons and company might make it even worse uh, for Matt Ryan this week. And the Cowboys are trying to do something that, as far back as we can track, has never been done before, which is 2000. Uh, no defense has ever finished as the top-scoring fantasy defense in back-to-back -back seasons. They were number one last year. They're number two this year behind only the Patriots. So wow. incentive there for them to go out and get it. You know what? Just pay attention to that, Cowboys. Like you have, you, you can do something for us fantasy managers, and you can you know put a feather in your own cap as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would stay away from the Colts offense as much as possible, and definitely start the Cowboys deep. Monday Night Football. It is the Saints and the Buccaneers. This for years has been kind of a hard-fought rivalry. The Saints. Well, the, the whole NFC South has fallen upon hard times. They're all still involved. They're all very much still in the race. None of them are above 500. It's kind of gross. Who scores more points, though, on Monday Night Football? Is it going to be Chris Olave or is it going to be Mike Evans? I'm going to go with Chris Olave right now uh, just because we know they'll take a couple of deep shots with him. He himself is a very good receiver. We just need Andy Dalton to get him the ball. Mike Evans, though, right now is in a big slump. Like he, It's a career long, I think, seven games since his last touchdown. And Tom Brady has always struggled against the Saints. He one time since he's joined the Bucks, I believe he's top 10 fantasy points against them. And then Marshawn Lattimore returned to practice this week. If he suits up, Mike Evans might not finish the game. That's the other part, right? The Marshawn Lattimore, Mike Evans rivalry. We should probably, you know, see who, you know, whatever. There's got to be some fantasy angle to that one, too, that we can sort of uh, try to 
prognosticate about. But I like Chris Olave as the guy in this one. He's been Mr. Air Yards all year long, doing big things. It's wild. We were debating which of the two Ohio State wide receivers was going to be better, Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave, and the answer was yes. Because <laughs> they both were really, really good this year. Beware of Alvin Kamara. And again, this is another guy that you probably are starting. You spent a first-round pick on him. And he hasn't been so bad that you can drop him because who else are you going to get? And I know that was definitely the argument when I when I asked the question on Twitter. And I, I understand that. So it's hard to get away from Alvin Kamara. But, man, the usage has been inconsistent. The, the touches have been inconsistent. Mark Ingram is back now to take some more of those snaps in that backfield. And it's just not a good matchup. So everything's sort of pointing against Kamara. I, I don't know who you would start in his place. I'd have to, you know, obviously it's a case by case basis, but man, this is just not a really good situation for Alvin Kamara. That gets us to scary matchups. Seems like a really nice transition. Matchups for star players that have you at least a little bit worried, maybe not so worried that you're benching the guy, but definitely worried enough that you hope that somebody else can pick up the slack. So for you, what is the first one that has you a little bit nervous this week? Justin Jefferson against the Jets secondary. Like this is uh, when, when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object because Justin Jefferson, I think you can make the case that he's easily the most talented or one of the most talented wide receivers in the NFL right now. But on the other side, Sauce Gardner is one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, I would say. I know he's a rookie, but I, I think he deserves that high praise. But the Jets secondary as a whole, their defense as a whole, has been elite this year. So obviously you have to start Justin Jefferson. He can still win in very tough matchups. But I think this is a week where the floor is definitely lower than normal. Yeah, I can see that with Justin Jefferson. I also feel that way about Jonathan Taylor going against the Cowboys. And you talked about starting the Cowboys defense and what this means for the Colts offense. If they can get pressure on Matt Ryan and really shut down that passing game, that makes this, this offense a little bit more one-dimensional. And if the Cowboys can get out and score points, then suddenly it's a negative game script. That bodes poorly for Taylor. And then just flat out, the Cowboys have been pretty good against the run so far this year. So there are a lot of reasons that I have some concerns about starting Jonathan Taylor, who really has had kind of a meh season for the most part, especially for a guy that you probably took number one overall. Anybody else that you have worries about this week? Tua Tungavailoa, just a little bit. I, I will say I, I wrote about him as a start in the stardom sit -em. I think you ride with Tua because trusting Tua in a hard matchup it's not just about trusting Tua, it's trusting Tyreek Hill, it's trusting Jalen Waddell, it's trusting Mike McDaniel, and I think while they're, it's a good 49ers defense, the 49ers have a good offense as well, so if they're putting up some points, I think this could become a higher scoring game, uh, and, and if that's the case, we know Tua is going to have to throw the ball. Again, it's a hard matchup, I, I think it is the actually the hardest test for Tua all year so far. But I still, I, I still think there's enough talent on Miami where you start them. So uh, on, on TikTok, I do a, a start-sit thing by position. And I, I had Tua as a sit, but mostly because, uh, you know, it's sort of, a, sort of a binary thing. I don't have a beware option there. And somebody was saying, <laughs> this is one of the responses, was it? I think it's a, re a respectable response was, Tua's been too good all year long to consider benching him. And I said, well, look, look, I understand that. I don't think that's a ridiculous thing to say. But also... Tua wasn't really highly drafted. If you drafted him, you probably have another quarterback. So depending on what your matchup is, maybe you get away from him. But look, I get it. If you're going to start Tua, he's been really good all year long. So you have that belief in him. You keep it rolling. I'm totally fine with that situation. Same sort of thing with Lamar Jackson, right? We believe in Lamar Jackson. We believe in his ceiling. We even kind of believe in the floor a little bit for Lamar Jackson. But, man, that Denver defense has been so good. And especially with a Ravens offense that I mentioned earlier has kind of been struggling. You've got Lamar sort of trying to play hero ball with limited success. They don't have any consistent wide receivers. I mean, Rashad Bateman has been hurt. We've seen Demarcus Robinson sort of pop up. Uh, they just haven't really been able to generate a lot in the passing game because Mark Andrews, since his injury, hasn't come back and had a big game just yet. The Ravens are really just not a very explosive offense at the moment. Now, Lamar's doing what he can, and he can always break out and run for 80 to 100 yards, which certainly helps for fantasy managers. But it's a scary, scary situation. So, Lamar, uh, I, I don't know how many guys uh, I really feel comfortable starting ahead of him, but I'm also not super comfortable starting him against this Broncos defense. Um, I don't know. Do we... 
how do we feel about Lamar? I mean, does, it, does this thing turn around at some point? Because it's been kind of a prolonged slump for him. Yeah, I, I was too much of a coward to write about him as a sit in the start <laughs> sit. I, I think he's like a beware kind of player this week. But he, he put up fantasy points last week, but it looked very ugly in doing mm-hmm. so. I think part of it is just there's no one making plays around him. Like, he has to literally be that entire offense right now. It, it is, it's asking a lot. He does it pretty well, but it's still asking just a whole lot out of him. We got one more segment left to go. We're going to come back and talk about sleepers as we wrap things up on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Time for Preparation Equals Performance, presented by Castrol Edge. This is when we talk about some sleepers for the week, so we each got three of them. Who's your first one? Jimmy Garoppolo. I I, I think you'll like that one. Um, He's been playing good football. I think he deserves a little bit of credit. In the last month, he's been averaging 18 fantasy points per game. He doesn't have a turnover, which is huge for Jimmy G right now. Uh, But the thing is, I I already said I think this game could be kind of high scoring between two good offenses. I also think it's just a great matchup for Jimmy G in the sense that the Dolphins allow the fourth most yak to opposing offenses. And this is one where I think Jimmy G could just, hey, Debo, hey, McCaffrey, hey, Kittle, I'm going to throw these little short little passes. You guys are going to run a bunch of yards and I get the fantasy points for it. That's exactly what happens. Just, just get the ball to your playmakers. Uh, you know, step one, get it to your playmakers. Step two, don't turn it over. Step three, profit. Like that's the whole thing for Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> I think it's a similar situation for Marcus Mariota, where he's got a good situation against the Steelers this week. Maybe he doesn't have the same kind of playmakers that Garoppolo does, but does have a really good matchup. We saw the Steelers, especially in the second half, sort of give up some yards to Matt Ryan in an offense that didn't really seem to have a clue in the first half. Plus, we know Mariota has that rushing upside. So even if he's not necessarily getting it out to a lot of his receivers, what have you, he can still run for some yards. And, you know, who knows if this is going to be a high-scoring game or not. But Mariota has some deep league potential. Certainly should be in a lot of two-quarterback lineups. Uh, Next sleeper for you this week. Damian Pierce, uh, who a month ago would have been crazy to call him a sleeper. Now I have to go on Twitter and tell people not to drop him because uh, the other day he was the most popular answer to my tweet of, like, who are you dropping this week? And I'm like, no, don't. not only should you not drop him, I would start him this week. Uh, (laughs) You could make the argument, and I don't even think it's a competitive argument, that he's had the hardest schedule amongst running backs over the last five weeks. In that stretch, he's faced three teams in the bottom ten in fantasy points allowed to running backs. His good matchups were just middle of the pack ones. He went for over 100 yards in each of those. He is a great matchup this week, though, against the Browns, who allow the second most fantasy points to running backs. Not only that... They allow the fourth most yards and fifth most touchdowns on inside carries. Damian Pierce has seen almost 80% of the Texans inside carries this year. And with this being a game, like we said, we think the Browns could run the ball a whole bunch. The Texans are going to be like, sign me up for that. We don't want Kyle Allen throwing. We'd rather Damian (laughs) Pierce carry the ball. I mean, part of the problem for Pierce the last couple of weeks is that the Texans have pretty much been trailing at the national anthem. So hopefully (laughs) if that doesn't happen this week, he can actually stay on schedule a little bit. I do like Zay Jones as a sleeper this week in Jacksonville. And I mentioned earlier that Trevor Lawrence looks like he's really coming into his own. This offense starting to find its footing. And a lot of it has been Zay Jones doing some work. He's had nearly 40% of the targets over the last couple of weeks, really doing some big things. It's been him and Christian Kirk getting a lot of the opportunities. And I already said, I think this is going to be a potential score fest between the Jaguars and the Lions. So I think a lot of the offensive players on both sides of this are in play. We can't always count on Zay Jones to get us 27 points like he did last week. And if you got that, congrats to you. You're some sort of warlock who can see the future, and you don't really need to listen to what we're saying here because you know how things are going to turn out. For the rest of you, though, who don't necessarily uh, have a Hogwarts degree, you can try and start (laughs) Zay Jones because I think the matchup is really good for him. Uh, Your final sleeper of the week is? I'm going to go with Latavius Murray here. And I know, like, last week wasn't great, but he still got you almost 11 fantasy points. And, like... 92 yards on the ground like that's useful for fantasy purposes and the week prior to that he scored a touchdown he got you over 17 fantasy points like it's never gonna be sexy or anything like that with Latavius (laughs) Murray but he's getting all of the work right now in that backfield and with the Ravens offense struggling 
This could be a week where the game is close for, for a lot more than the Broncos games have been close as of late, which could mean a couple of extra carries for Murray. And again, if you're starting him, you're just hoping for a touchdown. It's really all you're hoping for. And hopefully for Russell Wilson's sake, he doesn't get screamed at by a defensive <laughs> player this week uh, on his own team. Do you think Latavius Murray went to Russell's birthday? Well, that's a good question. Apparently only half the Broncos went to uh, Russell Wilson's birthday Russ. party, which means more people went to his than went to Bo Callahan's. That's a draft day <laughs> reference for anybody. My last sleeper is Olamide Zacchaeus, in part because Arthur Smith hates our fantasy teams, but in part because he is starting to get more work. And shout out to Adam Rank, who actually was on top of it last week and sort of, I don't know if it was one of his five guarantees on Friday or where it was, but he did give Zacchaeus a little bit of love. And again, I mentioned Mariota as a sleeper. The Steelers secondary has been problematic this year. And I think they do, I don't know how many, how much resources they devote to trying to slow down Drake London, but I do think that leaves Zacchaeus with some opportunities. Uh, this is definitely more of a deep league play. I wouldn't go sitting, uh, say, Amari Cooper for Alameda Zacchaeus, but if you need help at a flex spot in a deeper league, this is a guy who can give you some opportunity. If you want some names like that and some more, you can always check out my sleepers column at NFL.com slash sleepers. comes out on Thursday morning, so look for it then. Of course, you can always subscribe to this show and all the other shows we do, and they'll all show up in your podcast feed. You can see us on the Fast Channels, in the NFL app, and on YouTube as well. But in the meantime, that is it. We are done. We appreciate you hanging out with the NFL Fantasy Football Show presented by Subway. Try the Subway Series menu. Your pick of 12 irresistible subs. You know the drill. Tell two friends to tell two friends. Rate, review, and remember, you can't have everything because, I mean, where would you put it? Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy week 13. And we'll talk to you next week.